Good morning, church. It is so good to see all of your lovely faces, and I'm very blessed and very honored to be sharing this last Sunday of 2015 with y'all. I'm glad you all are here early this morning, so let's thank God for that. And now we will have our call to worship given by the best vocalist on the face of the earth, Mr. James Martin. <laughs> He was all right. <laughs> now, I'll ask if you would be so kind to please stand and open your programs up so that we may read our opening sentences. If you're ready, say amen. amen. Kickoffs belong to ball games, but also to the days of our lives. if you'll please share the prayer. You are our confidence, God, the one who grows our beliefs and the one who inspires us to new and better ways to live in the spirit of Christ. Amen. So if you'll please, turn, please remain standing and return to your hymnals to page 714 as we sing verses 1, 2, and 3 of I Know Whom I Have Believed.
had such wonderful singing for the early morning hour, remain standing as we affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, That microphone definitely comes out of the lower portions of God's creation. Um, it's a brand new year coming, and I'm trying not to be profane. So uh, when it works, it works very well. And when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's the sermon for today. Go home. Thank you very much. I don't know how the holiday went for you. It goes in different ways for different people. I hope it was excellent, beautiful, and wonderful in any way. And if it happened to be difficult and challenging and complicated, um, always look at this. Uh, what we often say is, hey, did the good outweigh the bad? Did the difficult times overcome all of the pleasant ones? And whatever the answer is, there is one word that is good news, and that's God is right with us right with us in the middle of it all, rejoicing in our joy, feeling with in our difficulty, and repairing the microphone in a loving way. So <laughs> let's see what we're going to do this, with this one. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. Ooh, you. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing and obey the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. Yahoo! I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. Oh, Lord, I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. And obey the Spirit of Nice and soft, I'm going to pray when the Spirit says pray. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray when the Spirit says pray. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pray when the Spirit says pray. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray together, please. Thank you, God, for songs to sing. For songs to sing when the day is dark. And for songs to sing when the day is blazing with sunlight. Thank you for the Spirit that is not away from us, but with us. For a God.
Okay, I'm back. Hmm. I got it. Stand up. <laughs> Please turn in your hymnals to page 383 as we sing verses 1 through 4 of This is a Day of New Beginnings. have such lovely voices. But please remain standing and turn to page 862 in the same hymnal where we will read verses 1 through 6 of Psalm 150. Say amen when you find it. I don't want to start without nobody. The 150th Psalm reads, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God for his mighty deeds. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with sounding cymbals. Let everyone that breathes praise the Lord. Take a moment or two to say hello to each other, peace and all that stuff. Yeah. Test. We can use that one if that's okay. Okay, y'all, it's great to see each of you. Bless your hearts. We're glad that you're here. 
We hope that you had a lovely holiday and that everything went just exactly as you hoped. And if it didn't, then there's always another one. That's what's good. Uh, this is the last Sunday of a year. You know what's tough for some of us? I just get used to writing 2015 on letters and checks and stuff. And then there's 2016. And this will actually uh, reach your heart. Years ago, we had a guy in the church. Uh, he's in heaven now, Carl Akers. And he was a barber. And I said, Mr. Akers, it seems to me like the years go quicker and quicker as you get older. He said, Sugar Plum, wait till the decades go by the same way. <laughs> you know, and I think that they actually do. Anyway, we're so proud that you're here. And thank you very much. Uh, a lot of the staff is off today after all of the busy holiday movements. And uh, so you're stuck with the old preacher. And uh, I'm delighted to be here. We had a great time last week. Everything worked well. Uh, all of our services were uh, different and meaningful. Uh, the little uh, simple service across the street, uh, share and tell. We would sing a carol and somebody would tell a Christmas story. Um, and then when we came here, we had that very formal liturgy, which for many people lifts up the majesty of God and which illustrates uh, the emptying of God's um, beauty and richness as Jesus became flesh and uh, dwelt among us. Anyway, uh, we, it was a good time. Uh, you've been good to help us close the financial gap during the year. Um, you realize I have been preaching since 1954. <laughs> I was licensed in 1954, ordained in 1962, and I've never preached a sermon on money, and I never will, because I believe money follows purpose, and you've been beautiful about that, and we don't even like to ask but on the other hand, in this church, most of the money given goes for direct ministry. And you can check it out. And uh, so thank you very much because you've made it happen. The budget has been met completely. The gap has been mostly closed. And we'll give you a report next week uh, so you can specifically know about that. And it only happened because you made that so. Thank you. Neighborhood Ministries um, will not meet this week. Neither will we have Wednesday evening services this week only. But we do need some food. The pantries are very bare. I think they told me, maybe some of y'all who were here, I was in the hospital last Tuesday, but uh, some of, uh, that we had over 150, is that right, last week at the neighborhood ministry. So um, I think somebody even told me 195. But anyway, we, uh, we do what we can, and we have a good time. And let me tell you something. One of the most important things we do at neighborhood ministries is get together and respect each other. That's much more important than the food or anything else that we do. Keith, you said we did or did not have Wednesday services. We do not have Wednesday services here, as far as I've read on the menu. <laughs> I must have been absent when they made that decision. But anyway, uh, <laughs> no neighborhood ministries and no Wednesday. Day. And notice that we will move the evening service to 6 o'clock in January because a lot of people felt that would work better for them. We've stuck to the 7 o'clock thing. As somebody said to me one time, Jesus set the evening service at 7 o'clock and don't you dare move it. <laughs> and I said, what is your favorite song? He said, come weal or come woe, my status is quo. <laughs> <laughs> Altar flowers are placed by uh, Jeff and Tina on the celebration of their 23rd wedding anniversary, and they will be here a little bit later. Any other announcements from the congregation? Yes. Thank you, baby. That's good. That, you know, the needs exceed what is offered. Um, and what we're trying to do, let me tell you something we try to do, is to close the gap between honest and genuine need, you know, um, and just people who just take advantage. And um, for whatever it's worth, most of the people that we deal with uh, have genuine honest-to-goodness needs, honest-to-God needs. They're not trying to take advantage of anything. They're trying to make it. You know one thing we can learn from them? How to survive. We had a little street guy come in the other evening for the prayer meeting, and he said, I could teach you all some stuff about survival you all don't even know about. And he said, you couldn't even imagine. Other announcements? Yes. So we don't have Wednesday night this week. 
And next week, we don't have regular Wednesday night. We're going to have an old-fashioned, new-fashioned hymn sing. So we hope that you all will come out and join us for this new uh, idea where we'll sing your old favorites. If you have a request, send me an email, jamesmartinatwellschurch.org, or if you have a new praise song or contemporary song, and let me know what that is as well. So we're trying something new in the new year. Imagine that. <laughs> so please come. It'll be a lot of fun. That's good. <laughs> we're going to sing one of the Cajun songs, too. So that'd be good. It's called Le Me Rocos Fiete Nacura. Eh? And what does that mean? I don't have the vaguest idea. <laughs> Any other announcements before we turn to prayer time? Okay, let's share our prayer time. We've already heard some of the prayer requests. Um, let's pray for those people who have had difficult holidays and who find it hard. One of the stories that came out of our uh, sing and tell thing was for families who have lost kids, how hard that is. So let's remember those. What other, yes, Sue? All the other Okay, okay. Yes, Liz? Thank you, babe. Yes, dear. Okay. Yes, Chuck. Okay. Yes. Okay. Tough one. Yes, what is it? Okay. Nephew in the hospital. Aren't hospitals lovely places to be? <laughs> you know, necessary sometimes. And life-saving often. Yes. Yes, my dear. Okay. But, yeah. Yes. Brenda Trigg has had three deaths in her family in two months. And uh, I tried to call several of the people who've been walking through that kind of stuff on Christmas Day. It's interesting, folks, how easy it is to, to phone call these days and what an affirmation that can be. Uh, our Anthony is usually on top of the world, but he's kind of on the bottom of the heap today. And so I called him about 10 minutes after 7. And I said, baby, just want you to know we love you. And he said, um, that call might just make the day. You know, it's easy to do, but good. Let's have a prayer. Lord, each of these requests come from our hearts, and we know touch your heart. We know, God, that you care for us. We know that you're there for us. It's just that sometimes we want it to be the way we want it to be and when we want it to be. And so please hear these requests, each and all of them, and answer them with nothing less than your presence and your comfort and even your healing. We give you thanks and we give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, birthdays and anniversaries. Here we go. Yes. Okay, Pam's is Thursday. Yes, Jim. Okay, is that today? Today, today Wesley. Let's be sure and tell him on the way out, y'all. Yes, ma'am. Well, bless your heart. We'll sing through. Yes, sir. Okay, yes. Okay, baby nephew. Yes. Okay, okay, yes. All right. And it, yes, Sue. Okay. Anybody else? Y'all looking ready? Watch this. I'm going to get the key. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Since our world famous and distinguished director of music and creative arts at our church didn't get it right, we're going to do it again. All right there. <laughs> Just to, you know, it's just we need this. Let's take it right there. From God bless you and keep you. Give us the key so we get it right, Jim. God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. And now comes the time of great relief. The hour of taking your burdens away. <laughs> We're going to receive your tithes and your offerings, please, and thank you.
<laughs> Y'all excuse me. In this crazy world of ours, I need a little laughter. Uh, early in the service, somebody leaned over to the person next to them and said, is that preacher sober? <laughs> I tell you what, I'm pretty much drunk on the love of God for sure. Let's pray. Lord, thanks for the chance to laugh, for the freedom to cry, and for the wonder to be able to give. Bless gift, bless giver in Christ. Amen.
taught that child to sing. instruction didn't help my voice as much as Crystal's. <laughs> then I've never had a lesson with him either. You know. I would just love to be able to know how to say that word trumpet like that. Did you catch that? Trumpet. Trumpet. Yeah. Sound like crumpet. Trumpet. Yeah. I'm going to be petty for just a minute. So um, I don't know if any of y'all noticed that Psalm 150, but about praise God with everything you've got, drums, cymbals, everything. What do people that say we don't believe in instruments do with that? End of petty. Let's pray. <laughs> God, forgive us when we are small-minded and petty. Give us a different view of things, but help us always, if we do something in humor and in jest, to understand that it's not hurtful to somebody else. Join us now as we read and preach, and then have the moment at the altar on our knees. It all is a part of a day of new beginnings. We ask this in Christ. Amen. We look with me on the back of the bulletin. The uh, passages are very brief today, just two verses of Scripture. And for those of you that are willing to do it and would like to, we'll just read them out loud together. Let's do it. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. I have lots of memories of my mom, but one of my favorite memories of mom is her commitment to the Saints football team. She believed in the Saints. I said to her, but they don't win much. She said, I'm from New Orleans and I support the Saints. I said, but sometimes they don't play well. She said, I support the saints. 
That's exactly, if you stop to think about it, what the whole experience of God with us is about. Even when we don't do it well, even when we don't play the game as precisely or as expertly as we should, God is still with us and God still cares. And you know what? God still believes that before long, we'll win. That before long, we're gonna have a victory. I played most of my football games sitting on the bench. The only time they ever asked me to go in was when they needed somebody with a loud mouth. And, uh, I, you know, I would just say a few things uh, in Jesus' name. But anyway, uh, I was always excited about the kickoff. I don't know why. I don't know if you feel the same way. Uh, but, you know, even if you're not a real fan and all, you know, when that thing begins and you see the teams are all ready and the guys running down the field and the kickoff happens, um, it's a moment. It's one of those times to be remembered. And so as we wrap up 2015 and as 2016 opens up before us, uh, let's consider the kickoff of a new beginning, a chance to deal with a lot of things. Today we'll mention just a couple, but each of you can sort of take it and run with it in your own way. And one of the things that we need to deal with as the new year comes and the old year goes away is helping us to believe in an age of unbelief. You know, there's so much secularism around us. Somebody said the world is more secular than it is sacred. That's false. We think and hear a lot about the secular, but the fact is the whole world is sacred because the whole world is God created. The whole world is God continued. And every human being and every life that exists on the planet is a gift of God's continuing creative work. But because we don't all do things well, and because some of us are very cruel and unkind, and because some of us struggle to try to see how we can add peace in the place of conflict and love in the place of hate, it becomes all the more challenging. And that's why we can identify with this father that we just read about that had a very ill son. I want you to heal him, and I know you can, but I want you to help my unbelief too. I believe that God is in charge of the world, but every now and then when things don't look so good, and every now and then when things uh, where, where God is not directly intervening in exactly the form and fashion that we want, uh, that we hope we also go through those times and those situations of saying, help my unbelief. Notice that God loves us if we believe right or if we don't. If we've arrived in terms of our understanding of doctrine or if we're still working on it. You know what doctrine is? Doctrine is an attempt to put what we believe in the form of words and sentences. That's exactly what it is. And so we every day of our lives have an opportunity to take the words and the sentences of our life, of our expression, and make them God-filled, and make them God-centered. As a child, I was playing a ping-pong machine. Uh, pinball, excuse me. <laughs> That's not such a thing as a pinball. A ping, you know. And uh, I had won a bunch of games, and I had never said anything vulgar uh, out loud, but I lost all my games at one time, and a word slipped out. It shall not be repeated, but the word slipped out. And one of the girls standing near where I was playing said, I always thought that you were better than that. And I want you to consider that. We need to consider that in terms of the way we think and the way we give expression to what we think. When we're dealing with somebody who agrees with us and when we're dealing with somebody with whom we disagree in a very strong way, uh, to be sure that you understand that those words need to be conditioned. Uh, those words need to be positioned uh, by the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. When we are weak, we need the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to make us strong. Uh, if we don't have that in this world, we're gonna be in great difficulty. Our Christmas experience was complicated this year. Wasn't one of those easy ones, you know? And when we were all leaving and talking about it a little bit, what I said was this, I said, you know, What's always hopeful is that when you add it all up, the good outweighs the bad. The wonderful outweighs the challenging. Maybe you've never been there and don't know about that, but a lot of us have. On the other hand, the kickoff means that there's always a chance to begin again. 
always a chance for something brand new to come to pass. And then the other thing that we want to talk about here is that God, who has begun a good work in you, every one of you, wants to continue that so that it becomes a better work. In you and me, a better work, you know. And it's very plain. God began a good work in you and will continue. And a lot of people would say, I'm not too sure about that, God, having begun a good work in me. Let me tell you something. Listen, you wouldn't be here if it hadn't begun. You wouldn't be alive in spirit in any way if it hadn't begun. We're going on to completion. You know, one of the funny things is when we are ordained, you know, one of the questions they ask us, they say, will you go on to perfection? <laughs> and we answer, we will, God being our helper. Well, you know, I believe that. I believe you should do that. Uh, but there was a guy named Rudolf Hollingsworth, and he stood right next to me when we were doing They said, and will you go on to perfection? And old Rudolf said, I can't honestly promise that. <laughs> but what it says in Matthew chapter 5, at the very end it says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Anybody here think they're that perfect? I hope not, you know. But what that is, is the goal. In a ball game, you move toward the goal. And I remember Bishop Jack Meadows one time preaching a sermon saying, he used that passage of scripture, said, don't look to the right or the left, but look straight toward Jesus, the author and the pioneer of our faith. And he said, isn't it interesting that some of us live our lives looking to the right or the left to see how the Joneses are doing or the equivalent thereof? Or some of us look behind to see who's not quite as good as we are, and some people look ahead to be resentful of those who are ahead. And he said, why don't you just look at Jesus running right there beside you and move toward the goal of the kingdom of God and what God expects of the likes of you and me. You know, God puts broken things back together again. I remember two stories. One is about a guy that became a Christian and he was walking down the street and he told uh, his, he was walking down with his pastor and he said, you know what my life is like? And the pastor said, what? He stopped, and there was a telephone pole. And he said, my life is like this telephone pole. He said, what do you mean? He said, there was a time when my life was all crooked. And he said, and fallen over, but now it's straight and pointing toward heaven. He said, thank God for that. But see this, see that? And the preacher said, yeah. Uh, what is those? He said, that's places where they put nails into the telephone pole. Or uh, where they put those spikes in there so that you could climb up on the pole. He said, sin leaves its remnant, but I'm still facing toward God, still looking toward heaven. A very interesting family went to the Caribbean on a little cruise. And one thing they found in one of the islands was a man who built things out of salvage. He, was a, he called himself a salvage engineer. And his entire house was made out of pieces of boat that had been discarded on the beach. Uh, or a piece of, uh, the front porch was held up by an iron beam that he found somewhere. It was rusty and all. But it was very, very unique. And they said, this man, when he had a yard sale, he would sell everything in the yard, including the yard itself. <laughs> this lady said, I'm going to tell you who it was in just a minute, said, this man was the only person she ever knew that when he had a yard sale would sell the yard, you know. Anyway, she was telling him how she was impressed by what he did and how he did it. And uh, he was curious. He said, a lot of people make fun of it because it doesn't look so good. And she said, well, to me, it's amazing because you've taken all these broken pieces and you've been able to put them together. And he said, man, I've got the best glue you ever heard of. He said, it's really good stuff. And she said... If you'll let me be honest, I think you're like God. And the man really took uh, issue with this. Oh, no, not me. I, you, 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 must, you don't know who I am, that kind, that kind of a thing, you know. And he said, well, why in the world would you say that? And he said, just a minute. And so before she could respond, he went into the house and he came out with a plate. It was a broken plate, but it was all glued together. It had one little gap that was still not replaced, you know. And he said, at least let me give you this plate. She said, see, you've just confirmed what I said about you, you're like God. God takes the broken pieces of our lives and by his spirit mends them and puts them all together. And he said, yeah, but there's still one piece missing. 
And she said, that's what new life is all about. One piece missing, one year ends. One piece to be added, a new year begins. God is helping our unbelief. And God is continuing the work which was begun in us. Bless God. Bless us. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our dear Father, help us to understand that church is not playing the religious game or even saying all the exactly right words. Church is allowing our unbelief to be met with new faith and our incompleted lives to move a little closer toward completion. If perfection is our goal, then help us move that way. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you mind turning to page 12 in the book for our communion service? begin with the uh, great thanksgiving on page 12, uh, 13, I'm sorry. Let's take the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Lord, heaven and the highest, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Holy is heaven and the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You have delivered us from the slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. And you know what I would add? A new covenant by bread and cup. And we'll talk about that in just one moment. But for the time being, will you each in your own way bow your heads and make your humble confession to Almighty God before we consecrate the sacrament? Let us pray together. Dear Lord, hear each of our prayers. Incline your ear to us and more. Give us the gift of your Holy Spirit. In Christ, amen. amen. My dear brothers and sisters, and that is not preacher talk to me. That's exactly what God wants of you and I. My dear brothers and sisters, on the night that our Lord Jesus was betrayed, imagine that night. He took bread and he blessed it. And he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body and it's given, broken for you. They had their meal. And when the meal was over, he took the cup and he blessed it too. And he said, drink from this, all of you. It's the covenant, the new one, the new beginning time. In my blood, shed for many for the remission of sins. As oft as you drink from it, do so in remembrance of me. We're going to open the altar in just a minute, and any of you who feel moved of God are as warmly welcomed as could be, and let me tell you why. This altar and this sacrament does not belong to us. It is God's gift to us in Christ. It is his table, and he's the one that said, whosoever will, let him come. So we're going to invite you to come, and uh, is she going to be singing? Is uh, Okay, uh, young lady, would you mind coming up here and helping us with communion? Incidentally, the whole city was named after Crystal, Crystal Jackson, you know. <laughs> James is 
who's going to serve with me this morning. So when you're ready, please come. Is there anyone that we could come to that could not come forward?
You know, as Crystal was singing Amazing Grace, it occurred to me, have you ever noticed how that song can be sung a lot of times, but it belongs to the one who sings it again? Because they give it its own particular meaning and power and spirit. And one of the things I want you to go away with, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. It's a new year, and I want you to go out of this church singing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a soul like me. Wretch I used to be, soul by the grace of God, I am now. God is good. For our closing song, please, let's sing, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee, 430. And I've got all verses, but we'll just sing the first and second. Let's stand. <laughs> Y'all, before you take hands, just think, I forgot this completely, but we have a service here tonight, a watch night service, and uh, Aunt Betty and them are cooking us some very special New Orleans soup, and uh, we'll have a small group session, and then we'll write a letter to ourselves, and we'll come in here and have a brief New Year's thing, and we'll beat everybody else around uh, getting the New Year in, so come around 6.30 if you would. Let's take hands and get ready to go.